Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to another updated college football playoff rankings. We had the update that came out last night. I'm going to react to it, go over the top four teams. They're kind of an uneventful night when it comes to you only had really one change there inside of the top 10. But beginning, how about Liberty coming in at number 25? Could they possibly be in play to be the group of five representative for a New Year's Six Bowl? That's good news for them sitting at 11-0. and They're going to be heavy favorites to finish 13-0. and You do have Clemson with four losses coming up to number 24. I don't have an issue with that. I would probably have Clemson inside, well... I don't know. At some point, the record does have to come into play. I think 24 is fine for them. I know people are pissed off about it. But in general, they have an unbelievable analytical profile. They do have some good losses. At 23, it is Tulane. So Tulane right now, kind of a favorite to possibly go to a New Year's Six Bowl. We will see. Very likely going to be facing SMU. Also a sneaky game with UTSA. If they lose to UTSA, could SMU be that top team to possibly be the Group of Five representative? Or would it be Liberty possibly sitting undefeated at 13-0 but with a horrible, horrible schedule? That'll be an interesting battle there. At number 22, it is NC State. What a season NC State has had. So NC State is going to be ranked number 22. North Carolina is unranked. That's crazy going into that rivalry game. Tennessee down three spots to 21. They have four losses. I mean, I, I I don't know, man. I guess you can say, well, they lost to Georgia. They got crushed, though. They have very little passing game. They have very little wide receiver weapons. They're coming in at 21. At number 20, it's Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State, you know, the wheels really could have fallen off for them, but they come back. They get a nice win last week after being down. At number 19, it is Kansas State. I still think Kansas State is underranked when it comes to three lost teams. I think they're better than Notre Dame. I think they're better than Iowa, although I do, you know, you see Iowa sitting at 9-2. and two. Notre Dame at number 18, pretty solid ranking there. If you're Ohio State, you have to be happy, although I don't think that's going to really matter at all, depending on what happens here at the end. If the Buckeyes do lose to Michigan, they are very likely to be out just because of the amount of undefeated teams we have remaining. There you can see Iowa sitting at number 17. They're down a spot. They are 9-2. and two. They do have a tough game with Nebraska. Believe they're one-point underdogs, or maybe that's a pick'em game. The over-under sitting at 26.5. We've got to complete the trinity. Give us another Iowa under, please, Lord. At number 16, it is Oregon State. Very surprised Oregon State dropped out of the top 15. I thought they would still be top 15, but I mean, I guess it's anecdotal. They're at number 16. It's the the next best one, but they did fall five spots. Moving out to number 15, it is Arizona. What a season for Arizona, man. Completely irrelevant at the start of it. They're a top 15 team right now, and they've got the rivalry game with Arizona State where they're double-digit point favorites. They're going to be getting into a very solid bowl. Would love to see them make a New Year's Six Bowl. Unfortunately, it's not going to happen with the three losses. You can see LSU at number 14, very likely to finish 9-3. and three. You've got Jaden Daniels, the Heisman numbers. Probably not going to win it because of the three losses. But, I mean, LSU at number 14, you want to see them keep winning. If you are FSU, very important that LSU wins this final game if you are Florida State. At number 13, it is Oklahoma. Really solid team sitting at 9-2. and two. At number 12, Ole Miss also at 9-2. and two. And then Penn State moving up a spot as well sitting at 9-2. and two. So kind of the two lost teams there. And then you can see basically no change. You do have Louisville coming in at number 10. I could very easily see Louisville lose to Kentucky. Even if they do lose to Kentucky, considering that is a non-conference game, they will still be in their conference championship, the ACC conference championship against Florida State with a backup QB. At number 9, it is Missouri. So Missouri possibly making what would it be very likely be the Sugar Bowl. So they're in a spot right now if they beat Arkansas on the road, sitting as 7-point favorites, they will very likely make a New Year's Six Bowl. You do have Alabama coming in at number 8, still behind Texas. It's a roadblock for them. And then you can see Oregon at number six. So if you're Oregon, you've got to love your place right now. The only concern would be being behind either of the other two one-loss teams, Texas and Bama, since you're ahead. You're almost smooth sailing, especially with how good your offense has been, to where if you win out, based on the fact that you're very likely going to jump one of Ohio State or Michigan, 
you, you know, you're in a very good spot considering also you're very likely going to have to beat Washington. You beat Washington, you jump them. There you go. You're inside of the top four. You can see FSU down one spot. Now this, th them moving down one spot is not because of the quarterback situation. It's because Washington's resume is just ridiculous right now and they had to move up. So Washington sitting at 11-0, amazing, multiple ranked wins, beat Oregon, you know, the win against Oregon State. And now they're at number four. They've got a game against Washington State. Very likely they're going to be going to the Pac-12 championship against Oregon in a de facto win and in. No matter who wins that game, whether it's Washington or Oregon, I would be shocked at this point if they get left out based on how good the Pac-12 is. As long as Washington enters that game with zero losses, it would be a one loss Oregon, zero loss Washington. You can see Michigan, Ohio State, Ohio State sitting at two, Michigan at number three. Very similar teams in terms of their analytical profile almost identical Ohio State has that good non-conference win on the road over Notre Dame so that's going to put their resume above Michigan and then you still have Georgia at number one certainly the blowout win over Tennessee there's no way they're going to drop back I will say this is what I expect to happen because people are starting to speculate on it Yes, I would expect Ohio State to jump Georgia next week. The resume is just going to be too good, especially with a road win in Ann Arbor. But the question becomes, because the Big Ten is so lopsided, Ohio State's really not going to pick up a quality win if they beat, you know, when they beat Iowa in the Big Ten championship, as opposed to Georgia possibly beating Alabama. Georgia very likely would go back to number one. So we could see these teams yo-yoing. Ohio State go to number one, and then Georgia take it back in the final rankings, the Buckeyes would be at number two, and then you would very likely be setting up at this point, just, just based off of how this is going, an Ohio State-Oregon matchup based off of what I think could play out. If Oregon wins out, if Washington beats Washington State and then loses to Oregon, you would have Oregon as a three. Ohio State would stay at as a two if they beat Michigan. I mean, it's the exact same thing to where if Michigan beats Ohio State, Michigan very likely is facing Oregon. If you are Oregon or you are Washington, you're very likely looking at facing a Big Ten team because if Georgia wins out, I don't see any way Georgia's not number one. Even if Ohio State jumps Georgia next week, Georgia would still have that win over Alabama. Now, here's where it gets interesting. You have Florida State at number five. The narrative surrounding them with their backup quarterback, guys, we're going to have to see how well they play with their backup quarterback. They still have Florida, and they still have Louisville. Now, things could get a little weird if Florida State barely beats Florida and Graham Mertz doesn't play, so that's kind of a devalued win in and of itself, and then Florida State barely beats Louisville, and let's say Louisville loses this week to Kentucky, so that win would also be devalued, and they barely win these games. So they're 13-0, and but they look shaky with a backup quarterback, and they don't have the greatest resume at all when it comes to that, and then you have the death scenario on top of it where Alabama beats Georgia, right? That's the death scenario. But then if you're Alabama, your number one concern has to be Texas. How would you jump them? Texas has the head-to-head -head win. How would it be justified? And if you're Texas, I think your biggest concern is just the, the amount of undefeated teams. And, and would the committee really put a one-loss team ahead of an undefeated Florida State? Let's say Florida State loses a game. They're completely out of it. I don't see them making it if they lose once. Even if they go 12-1, and win the ACC. If they lose to Florida in the rivalry, I don't see them making it. Let's just say Florida State is out. You're going to have Georgia at number one. Let's say Georgia wins out. They'll be number one. Ohio State wins out. They'll be number two. Michigan's gone. Bama's gone. And now you've got a very easy argument at that point you would likely have Oregon or Washington slide into number three and Texas slide into number four. And you would get a Georgia-Texas matchup and you would get Ohio State versus the Pac-12 champion. That would be kind of an, an easier scenario. The one argument you can try and make, and, and this is not going to hold up, it's just Ohio State would need so much to happen this year. Ohio State did lose to Michigan last year and they still made it. The issue is the amount of undefeated teams. Like, would the committee really put a one-loss Ohio State in front of, a, even like a one-loss conference champion Texas, I don't see it happening. I, I, I just don't. The Big Ten this year, there's just not enough quality wins for Ohio State. I thought going on the road and beating Wisconsin was going to be a quality win. It's just not at all. So right now, when you're talking about teams that control their own destiny based off of these current rankings, obviously Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, Washington, 
They're all undefeated. They all control their own destiny. They win out. They're in. It's very simple. Florida State, you can make the argument, well, because Ohio State and Michigan face each other, that's going to take care of that. We'll immediately slide into the top four as long as we win out. I'm not sure you can say that just yet. Now, I am someone that thinks if you go undefeated, you should be in the playoff. You should have a chance to win the national title. That's why I've always hated the BCS because the BCS only had two teams. Imagine a team goes, you know, 12-0 and or whatever, 13-0, and and they still can't play for the national title. But the problem with Florida State is the backup quarterback situation, and we'll see how well they play. Could this be a situation like Ohio State in 2014 where Cardale Jones comes in, wins 59 to nothing against a ranked team, and they get in? You know, very, you know, it, it could be. We'll have to see. But it just depends on how the backup QB plays. It, it could get very dicey depending on if the backup struggles, but Florida State still wins. Do you leave them in? Do you put them out? I, I, I don't really know what the committee would do when it comes to that. And then Oregon, it's just very simple. You have to win out, you win out, you're probably going to be in because you're already above Texas. If you're Texas, your best chance right now, I would say, it's just so hard, but having FSU lose is huge for Texas. If FSU loses, Texas is in such an amazing spot because at that point, you would have... The, one of Michigan, Ohio State behind Texas because one of those teams is going to lose. And then both you know, one of Washington or Oregon behind Texas because one of those teams is going to lose. Texas right now, they've got a pretty easy game against Texas Tech to end their season. And then they have their conference championship. We'll see who that ends up being versus. It's looking actually pretty positively like it's going to be Oklahoma State, which is an easy matchup for Texas, which is both good and bad because it's very likely going to be a win, but it's not necessarily a great resume builder. Although based on that conference, the only real resume builder you could get is probably a rematch with Oklahoma at that point. But either way, looking at this, I would say Texas is in a bit of trouble if FSU wins out. Because you're going to have the Big Ten champion. You're going to have, well, I mean, I mean, listen, if maybe Texas, their saving grace could be Alabama beating Georgia when you think about it. Because Alabama beats Georgia, but do they slingshot Bama in front of Texas? And if you're not going to slingshot Bama in front of Texas, then Georgia, by default, actually has to be behind Texas as well. Because Bama would have to be in front of Georgia because Bama would have the head-to-head over Georgia and they'd both be one loss. So your saving grace for Texas, it's this simple. You need Alabama to beat Georgia. That that would be your saving grace because Georgia, I mean, what do you do with Georgia in that spot? I think Georgia might be out of it, honestly, because there's just so many undefeated teams. There is the polarization of this Georgia team. They've won 28 games in a row. They're back-to-back national champions. They're, they're, they're this crazy team. If they lose a close one to Alabama, there's going to be a ton of people saying Georgia still needs to be in. They're a one-loss team. Come on. But I don't know if you're talking like a one-loss Georgia versus a one-loss Oregon who wins their conference championship. That's a very interesting battle because Oregon's resume actually is not very good. Now, they would have a win against Oregon State and Washington, which actually would significantly improve it. Yeah, that would. Uh, So I think if you're Texas, it's very simple. You want Bama to beat Georgia. Obviously, the best thing would be FSU losing one of these games so you don't have to worry about trying to argue being in front of an undefeated FSU. You're going to have Ohio State and Michigan take care of themselves. One of them is very likely going to make it. I mean, I guess best case scenario is the winner of Ohio State Michigan loses to Iowa. (laughs) Imagine that. But yeah, that's very unlikely to happen. Either way, guys, that is just kind of the current breakdown. That's going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on X. Link to that's always in the description.